Hello everyone, I'm uh, just feeling like I want to test out some new tools that I just picked up for myself. Um, so I've uh, sketched out uh, Ray from the new Star Wars movies. Actually, I want to keep sketching on it just a little bit. Where did I put my pencil? <clears throat> and uh, didn't announce this anywhere, so uh, I don't know if anyone will find it. But uh, Oh! <laughs> Hi Chrissy. Thanks for uh, hopping in the stream. Appreciate it. So, um, yeah, is, is, is this bright enough to see, by the way? Can you sort of see what I'm sketching here, or is it a little too dark? I'd be curious to, to hear your, your thoughts before I go too far uh, with what I'm creating here. Hey, Nintendo, thanks for hopping in. Let's see. Chrissy says, I'm finally first. Now my life has meeting. The contrast is too low. Okay. Let me see if I can adjust it. Hello, E.T. Let me see if I can adjust the contrast a bit more to get this. Because your face is over bright. Well, that's because there's only one light on uh, in this room. I'm trying to see. What can I do to do this? Give me just a minute here, folks. I'm just going to play with these a little bit. Mm, yeah. Okay, that's, that's a little sharp. I can see it pretty well. It's a bit light, but yeah, I can make it out. Well, this is a very light sketch. Um, it's very light right now, so hopefully as I uh, begin inking it, you'll be able to see this a little better. Because, um, like, you can probably see, like, you know, like my hand or these pencils pretty well, right? But this is pretty faint. Um, oh, wow, a bunch of people are here. Let's see. Kudos on using that nib. I never could quite get the hang of it. Well, I haven't started using it quite yet, Brendan, but that's my goal today is to practice with my uh, Hunt 102 nib. Uh, let's see. Nintendo says he drew a crow, Hellboy, and Batman that laughs inking recently. Nice. Yeah. Like Chrissy says, it'll probably look a little better when the ink goes down. So I'm going to... Set this drawing just up here for a moment while I get some ink. Hey, Kiro. Yeah, that looks good. That should be plenty. And uh, let's see. I have my brush and my nib and I'm going to practice with them a little and see uh, see how things go. So I'm actually going to now zoom in a little bit more so that you can actually see what I'm working on and we can talk uh, about technique as long as this goes well. But um, thanks everybody for, for joining me. I appreciate it. Okay. This over here. Um, I know this might not look good yet, but hopefully that's where I clean it up with the inking. I find a good ink to be a bit salty with a floral aftertaste, says Tardis Rider. Mm. One thing you can actually add food related to um, ink, uh, and it sort of actually depends on the time of the year, is if your consistency is a little uh, too watery, and this is close to too watery, but whatever, you can actually drop just a little bit of uh, flour into it. And that'll thicken up the consistency. Uh, you, you need to be pretty pretty gentle. You don't want to add too much. But um, yeah. So let's see what this is like here. Oh, yeah. This is great.
this is like working with the uh, the brush, but just a little bit finer. Maybe you should practice on test paper to make sure it doesn't bleed or anything. Well, this is all practice. Um, is that Ray? It is going to be Ray, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, True Fan Forum, for the question. Uh, <laughs> appreciate the concern there, Chrissy, but I think this is doing just fine. Um, just a little bit of issues with getting used to uh, the control here. But, um, yeah, this is nice. Right there. Let's see how this goes. There's a uh, satisfying sort of a textural feel to using nibs. You can hear it sort of scratch, but it feels kind of good. Um, I know I'm not answering a lot of questions right now. Uh, I just need a minute to get used to this brush and what I can do with it. And then I will uh, focus on the chat room a little bit. Let's see. Um, have you ever used ink wash by mixing ink with water? Sometimes I love experimenting with it and channeling my inner Tim Sale. That's from Brendan Sellers. Um, not really. Um, I prefer to use maybe like a watercolor pen uh, and, or even um, what would you what would I call it? Um, colored technical pens maybe. All right, so this is really good for super fine detail, but I'm sort of working on the outline, so I'm going to use a brush. Um, nothing too fancy here, just a, uh, a short liner. And that gives me a a little more control, well, not control, I shouldn't say, but um, a thicker line that works for the outline anyway. And the trick is definitely to uh, to get the right amount of ink on the brush because too little in it will actually come out kind of gray. Let's see. Nintendo just followed me on Instagram. Thanks. That's uh, right up here above my head. That's my Instagram and my Twitter. Did you remove the chat window from the video feed? I did. I wanted to show a little bit more space today, Chrissy. I prefer ink fresh from the squid, but man, milking one is a pain. That's true fan forum. <laughs> you know, even the milking isn't as bad as catching one, right? Get a nice thick line on her knapsack. 
a little bit thinner on the clothing. There we go. I'm going to move the ink so that I'm not blocking the uh, drawing constantly. Let's see how that goes. One of the reasons it's nice to sometimes take myself out of the comfort zone I have with work, you know, mostly I like working with brush pens and technical pens, but um, when you're working with brushes and nibs, you, you, you get little errors. And that's sort of where you get the energy, I think. Like, you know, you don't want to make big mistakes, but I'm saying that um, the the little the little mistakes that you have to sort of deal with and correct are sort of where you, you your your drawing can find some personality. So um, it's nice every once in a while to force yourself out of your comfort zone and uh, work with something a little different, a little new. Hello, Charles. Oops. So one thing I need to be a little careful of is uh, this ink stays wet longer than a technical pen. So I, I've actually already made the smallest of smudges here, but, but better to do that than like, you know, a bigger mistake later in the piece. Um, just to remind myself that this is using a different set of tools than I'm used to and I gotta be careful. Um, you can't see it too much in the uh, the video because I'm zoomed in but I, I'm trying to move my whole arm a little bit more as I am um, as I do the, the long sort of uh, areas of the, the longer lines. The, the longer you can sort of do a line, the more um, almost calligraphic it can be. Um, has some more personality to it. Inking with these tools definitely requires me to um, work a little bit slower and a little bit more carefully. Um, so I'm not looking at the chat window quite as much as I normally do. But um, just bear with me. I'll Try to read as much as I can when I can.
This is the part where a brush works best is texture. Hair and things like that. More mechanical stuff, um, the technical pens will look better, or even like the quill nib. But um, shadows on stuff like hair, uh, texture of soft materials, um, shadows, that stuff all benefits from a, a brush. Okay, let's see. I've missed a few things in questions. Let's see. Interesting. Uh, Brendan says, I always heard with inking, you'd rather have lines that are confident with personality than lines that are perfect. I can definitely see the logic in that. I mean, everything within moderation, right, folks? But yeah, I, I really like how um, without even much effort, um, using a brush just makes hair look more like hair. It's easier to do strands and the shading and so on and so forth. So uh, takes a while to be fast with a brush. I'm not fast at all, but I like the results very, very much. Take a moment here in a sec to uh, see what kind of questions are being asked in the chat room. Hope you can uh, bear with me as I talk a little bit slower than usual while I concentrate on getting this to look the way I want it. Uh, AT says this makes him think of how manga artists do their line art. I can see that. Uh, Let's see. I love how Jim Lee draws hair. He does it so effortlessly on his live streams. The best thing about Jim Lee is he works very, very fast. One approach I try, this is from Brendan Sellers, is to only ink the strands of hair at the bottom, away from the light source, and leave it blank where light is hitting it. Yeah. So there's some conversation going on between uh, Nintendo, Brendan Sellers, and uh, Software Agents Corp. I'm in my chat right now about uh, various artists and their inking techniques. Uh, maybe I should have had the chat window in here after all. Oops. When it comes to inking, the guy I love is Korean artist Kim Jong-gi. He works very fast. He works straight to ink, no penciling, and it's gorgeous. He's quite talented. That said, I haven't seen him do a lot of sequential art. Well, not that that's what I'm doing right now either, but I do think that sequential art requires some slightly different tools than just making a good single illustration. So I don't know if this looks good or not, but I'm trying to throw in a few harsh shadows. Uh, hopefully that will become more apparent the further I get on this piece.
I've been listening to the Hamilton soundtrack today and it's really stuck in my head. <laughs> I just keep wanting to sing it, but I don't really know the lyrics, first of all, so it would not sound good. <laughs> Second, uh, YouTube would instantly ding me and uh, say, guess what? You can't monetize this. You're using copyrighted material. Oh, thanks, YouTube. You really care about the creators. My friend uh, Travel worked for a time at Wildstorm Studios and got to see uh, Jim Lee work. And the one thing he liked to impress upon me was just that Jim was fast. He could bang out the layouts within just a couple minutes for a whole page. It was apparently, something to say. So. He's quite confident in his work. I don't feel like Jim Lee has necessarily tried to um, change his style all that much. Um, but I also think that he may have more interest in sort of um, being an editor and running things than, you know, just being a day-to-day uh, -day monthly artist. Like, is he even illustrating anything right now? I, if, if he is, I can't think of what it would be. Uh, Chris, what happened? I don't know. What happened? Oh, oh no! I was just uh, muttering that um, I felt like singing, and uh, YouTube, uh, if I if I did, they'll they'll pick it up and <laughs> demonetize whatever I'm working on. If I if I started singing Hamilton, uh, their robots would pick up on that, and this video would not get monetized. And uh, I kind of need it to be. So that's all. Yeah, it would be nice if I could sort of play some uh, background music of stuff that I like, but uh, eh, then I can't monetize it, and uh, at that point, I might as well just sort of sit down and draw with some music and not live stream, in other words. Nintendude is talking about how he's developing a comic about a robot DJ. Sounds interesting. I remember first drawing with these nibs in a, must have been a high school art class. And I was so confused as to why the ink sort of just holds in this metal piece and, and only gets released when you draw. I, I still don't really understand the physics of it, but 
All that really matters, I suppose, is that it works. Has anyone seen the comic book greats VHS series with Stan Lee from 91 and 92? I've seen a bunch of them, AT. I've seen, um, I've seen a few with, uh, like the image comics creators and stuff. Uh, they're interesting. By the way, um, for people that seem to love Jim Lee and image and stuff, uh, on YouTube, the sci-fi channel has released a five part documentary series. You can watch the whole thing on YouTube and it's uh, called, um, hold on, something like causing so much damage. The important thing about it is just that it's um, it's a documentary about the, uh, the, the history of Image Comics and they've got interviews with all the uh, all the founders and partners and a couple key players like Eric Stevenson, Brian Michael Bendis, uh, Robert Kirkman. Uh, it's interesting. It's fun. I mean, I think you a lot of it you may already know if you're a fan, but some of it you might not. Uh, it, it's very sort of fawning, you know, talking about how great Image Comics is. But I do like Image Comics a lot, so I've got no problem with that. And um, it... Uh, yeah, if, if it was trying to be like a, a little bit more of a serious documentary about the the effect on the industry, I think it would have tremendously benefited from getting some interviews with people that were um, editors at like Marvel and DC at the time. It, it, it does not have that. Uh, it pretty much just interviews people at Image Comics. So it's only like, you know, one perspective for the most part. But it's still very interesting because, you know, Liefeld and Lee are no longer with Image. They left back in the uh, mid-90s. So, uh, but they're in this documentary and they give their, uh, their take on the history of it all. And uh, Anyway, it's on the Sci-Fi Channel's um, YouTube channel and I think you'd enjoy it. Uh, let's see, Chrissy's offering me... Uh, a royalty-free playlist. Um, let me think about it. Let me listen to it offline first and uh, see if I can get into it. Because I kind of like listening to my favorite songs when I'm drawing, not just anything, you know. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe it's it's uh, very much appreciated the offer. Let's see who else has joined. Shirley, hello. Thank you very much for bringing in that package earlier today uh, and giving me a call. Yeah. I'm using this uh, one oh two nib right now to go over the hair uh, that obviously I previously did with that brush just because I can get some a few finer strands in here to sort of darken up um, a particular area but still sort of have it look like strands instead of necessarily big blotches of uh, black. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Who are you drawing? This is Ray from the Star Wars movies, surely? The new ones? Um, I, I like her quite a bit. I find her a very 
charming protagonist. Find her hero's journey interesting. So anyway, just felt like drawing her. So that's what I'm doing. And of course, I have to be careful not to go back and forth over areas that are wet when I'm working with ink like this. So it's a little different approach than what I am used to with my technical pens. Sigamigs joins. Am I drawing Ray? I am. Ray is so cool. I want to be her, says Chrissy. <laughs> you guys are great. It really is fun to uh, draw with a bit of an audience. Let me see. I'm trying to think of where I want to work. Okay. When I first saw Ray, Daisy Ridley instantly became my celebrity crush. <laughs> you seem to bounce from one area to another. Is that to give the ink time to dry and avoid smudges? Yes, it partially is. It's also just to, um, uh, well, uh, several things, actually. But one is to keep from getting bored. You keep sort of focusing on different parts with different textures and shading. Uh, but another is that it, I found if I get uh, focused on one area for too long, uh, I can really get lost in the weeds, like having fun drawing lots of details and, uh, you know, sort of distract myself from working on the piece as a whole. So, uh, so there's a few reasons. Yeah. And I think in a minute, I'm going to hop back to the brush and work on the left side of this drawing, at least the outlines.
not too many questions, so we're a little quiet. This is where music would help. Oh well. Any theories on who Ray's parents might be, says Sigamigs? Yeah, I, I've gone through thinking a couple different things. You know, for the longest time, I thought that, like, maybe there was a part of the Kenobi family out there, and maybe she was part of that whole lineage. But I don't really think that anymore. I definitely don't think she's a Skywalker. Um, I just don't see how that could make sense. I'm, I'm leaning now towards thinking she's just a new character whose family we don't know yet and we'll get to know. That's the way I'm leaning. We shall see. I'm hopeful for this next one because I have liked everything Ryan Johnson has done. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Brick. His movie Brick is uh, a movie I really like. So, fingers crossed. Any thoughts on Punisher? I found it too long and at times boring. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would give it overall sort of like somewhere between a B to a B minus. I thought that Punisher was actually pretty good. I do agree that it was probably overly long. I think that's a problem for all of the Netflix series. They 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 they're locked into this thirteen episode thing, and I don't quite see why. Um, I feel like. Eight would be plenty. But that does not seem to be what anybody's interested in making. So I don't know. Um, it was okay. It was pretty good. That, like, definitely the, those last three episodes were pretty exciting. Huh. It, it didn't nail everything, but I think they got Frank Castle right. I think uh, the changes to Micro giving him a family and making him younger were uh, well done because it gave Punisher uh, a good character to sort of act opposite, <laughs> like where they they had some goals that were aligned and some that were not. Oh, I'm inking a part that you can't say. Jesus, I'm sorry, folks. Let me let me jump back up here. I was starting to ink uh, a rock by her foot. I'll just I'll just go back to that later. I'm not familiar with Ryan Johnson's work. What can we expect for the new Star Wars? Um, interesting character dialogue. Uh, interesting sort of ideas about uh, subculture, parts of society maybe. May focus more on like, you know, the military, the politicians, or the gangsters than one of the movies has before, potentially. Um, clear action that's not hard to follow and is the result of, like, you know, character uh, goals and emotions. And if we're lucky, a little bit of a mystery. He's quite good at mystery, pacing that out. But yeah, if you're curious about uh, Ryan Johnson, I definitely think that uh, Brick 
and Looper are uh, good movies to uh, give a shot. And if you like them, uh, The Brothers Bloom. And I think he's done something else that's just not popping in my head right now. But anyway, he's a pretty young guy. Um, definitely 100% comfortable doing his own stuff. Uh, so if he's interested in working in Star Wars, it's probably because he was a fan of it growing up and actually has something to say. I, I, I like his work a lot. So... I'm hopeful. We shall see. Hope everybody out there is doing all right. It can be a stressful time of the year. Working on uh, two episodes of Comic Tropes this week. One about a very famous writer that I haven't been able to get to yet. Excited about that. Fantastic, deep comic book with a lot to explore. And then um, one about a very goofy Silver Age character. Uh, that's going to be a Patreon exclusive for now. Uh, and then... Um, both are actually DC, because people have told me I don't do enough DC. So, okay. I've got plenty to say about DC stuff. Here's some DC. And I'm planning on some long-term stuff for Christmas that I've been working on for a while. Not necessarily 100%, you know, ho, 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 and mistletoe, but uh, seasonal. And uh, been working on that, on, on getting elements of that for several months, but should be a nice tight episode. But uh, yeah, I've been planning ahead, and I hope it pays off. So my lovely fiance came to help help me get this art room set up for tonight we still had our um, air conditioner in the window from the uh, summer but it's definitely not going to get warm enough to need that so it was time to pull it out and uh, we were working on that together and she dropped a panel of glass on her foot and got severely hurt and I feel bad about that. So she took one for the team just so that I could be drawing for you all right now. Pretty awesome. How do you feel about the new ad ads? I find a bit try too hard. Hmm. Maybe. Um, I'll wait to see them in action and in context. Uh, I do wish they'd come up with like just totally new vehicle ideas and environment ideas. Um, I feel like we have seen some of the same stuff repeated, but we'll see. Uh, True Fan Form says, I love you, comic tropes. Wonderful to see videos where the maker actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah, well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, 
if I, uh, there's a lot of useless comic book knowledge banging around in my head, that's for sure. And then, um, sometimes there are topics that I am not as familiar with as others, so those take longer, and I do put a lot of time into research. And, it, and it's frustrating when you, like, realize later that you've missed something. You can't really go back and update that video, really. Um, I feel like that's kind of cheating. I mean, I could do the same topic again. Because there are moments where I'm just like, oh, darn it. I meant to add this or that to the conversation. But not too often, to be honest. Not too often. One of my viewers was watching a fairly new episode, the one about uh, the Punisher turning black with Luke Cage. And he said, um, wait, like when Luke Cage and Punisher leave after beating up the police, they take the policeman's car, but doesn't Luke Cage just leave his car behind? I'm like, yeah, he does. The police should have been able to find them in about two seconds. I can't believe I overlooked something like that. But it was nice to see that someone that was watching my video was paying attention and could pick that up for themselves. I like that. Huh. <sighs> I wonder how long I've been doing this. I didn't look at the clock when I started. Oh well. Oh darn it. Oh, I lucked out. I smudged some ink, but this is going to be a black area, so should be okay for for now. See you, TARDIS Rider. Oh, Karen jumped in. Nice to see you, Karen. Drawing a Ray from Star Wars tonight. And I'm um, working with uh, a brush, a uh, short liner, and then a Hunt 102 quill pen. <clears throat> what to do next? Hmm. I think I need to add more black.
Star Wars trailer just played on my TV, says True Fan Forum. Nice. I have actually um, only seen minor clips because I'm trying to avoid uh, the trailer. I know that I want to see this one, so I don't really want any um, anything spoiled. Uh, for instance, if you've seen the Thor Ragnarok trailer, you've seen some spoilers. And uh, I'd rather avoid that stuff and be surprised in the movie if I, if I know that I'm going to see it. But it's not easy, is it, to avoid that stuff? It's, uh, it's everywhere. Here's the one problem with nib, uh, like quills like this. You can, um, you're, you're sort of scratching the paper a little bit. So you can sometimes get little bits of, the tiniest bits of pulp stuck. And uh, it'll make your line thicker than you want it to be. So you'll start to get very, um, like this is only a tiny bit, but you'll start to get some very black fingers as you like sort of clean the brush up for yourself. So using something like this is good for technical lines and cross hatching, but um, uh, you got to use the brush for filling in the black areas. You just got to. I hope when I talk about technique that it doesn't sound like I'm just uh, lecturing, like like that I don't think you guys know what you're doing. I just figure um, at least some people that uh, tune into either the live stream or the or watch, you know, the um, archive version are uh, are curious about technique. Um, I'm not trying to presuppose that um, that you don't know what I'm talking about. Wow, Chris, that's starting to look really cool. I really do enjoy Daisy Ridley's acting. Very entertaining. Yeah, I haven't seen her in a whole lot other than Star Wars. You know, she had a tiny bit part on uh, uh, Toast of London. Uh, she was in uh, that Murder on the Orient Express. What else has she been in? She hasn't been in a lot. She's really, really new to uh, film acting. But uh, I think that really helped the character of Ray. So I decided to um, temporarily switch to a, um, a brush pen that I like. It's a brand new one. And um, it sort of helps me ink in some of these black areas faster. Like the brush is good for outlines and texture. This is good for cross hatching and fine detail. But, you know, if you want to cover a, a bunch of black area fast. Uh, a, a brush pen gives you a little more control and just overall a little faster, I think. All right, let's see. Uh, 
I haven't been able to practice my fountain pen quill inking, this is Karen, uh, because I don't have a good enough paper, paper that is not thick enough or pressed enough, just falls apart so easily. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. I like using um, Bristol and then, let's say, even then, not just any Bristol. Um, Oh shoot, I'm trying to remember whether I like, I think it's smooth is mostly what I use. Because yeah, uh, there's also vellum, but I think that that's too slick. I have a hard time inking on that. True Fan Forum says that Daisy Ridley was so good in Murder on the Orient Express. Um, I haven't seen it yet just because uh, I have read that book, so, you know, I don't think I... It's kind of impossible to get surprised by the mystery again, but um, maybe I'll rent it at some point. Do you have an answer for my question regarding older comics? I missed it, Shirley. I think I've missed several... Um, Several questions. Um, if you want to repeat it, I'll definitely try to an look and uh, answer. I'm sorry. Do you have an answer for my question? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to miss. Uh, I wasn't ignoring you intentionally or anything like that. Oh, would you ever consider groping older comics? I'm, I'm sure you didn't mean groping. I don't... Would you ever consider grouping? Oh, I'm not sure what, word, what verb you meant to, uh, to use. Would I ever consider something older comics Trooping. I think that your autocorrect is fighting you, Shirley. <laughs> I think your autocorrect is fighting you bad. Uh, the things we create in this world to make our lives better, and then they just fight us. Uh, so yeah, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what you mean. Sorry. Oh, troping, troping. Would I ever consider troping older comics? Well, well, I, I have done some, some older things here and there. Um, uh, one of my first uh, early episodes, like maybe three or four or something, was a uh, Golden Age Captain America comic. I've looked at a Golden Age comic that was really ridiculous called um, uh, Sergeant Spook about a ghost policeman. Um, I may have done one or two others. There's definitely some stuff that I do want to cover um, in older Golden Age. That's what it's called, Golden Age, like really old uh, comics uh, comics from essentially the uh, 30s up through 
about the 60s. Uh, it's called The Golden Age. Um, and I have covered uh, some horror comics from the uh, 50s. I've covered, uh, yeah, I've covered a, a few things here and there. So, so I have done some old comics. I, I do want to do more. I do want to do more. Oh, and uh, it's still a Patreon exclusive, but you are one of my Patreon supporters. Uh, there was that episode I did like uh, a few weeks ago uh, about Batman. That was a pretty old comic. That was from like the uh, 40s or 50s. I can't, I can't quite remember off the top of my head now. Good question. Sorry that autocorrect was fighting you on that one. I definitely know what that's like. I feel like there's a site dedicated to just like autocorrect fails that are unintentionally funny. Can't think of what it's called right now. But if anybody knows that site, let's post about it. Autocorrect. I feel like autocorrect gets stuff wrong at least as much as it gets right. Like it's trying to fit, to guess what I want to say and it just like throws down a word and I keep typing and I don't catch it right away. I always like try to proof my stuff before I send it, like for texts even. Oh my goodness. I, I just hate how often autocorrect fights me. I don't think I like it. I don't think I've come across a version of autocorrect that truly helps me. I don't think it speeds anything up for me enough. It might for some people, I suppose. I, I do know a few people that are not amazing at spelling. So I suppose autocorrect makes them a little more understandable. But those people are few and far between. Not sure if you did, but did you ever do a comic tropes on the crow? I I, I haven't, uh, Nintendo. I agree that it's um it's an important comic, um, but James O'Barr hasn't really done that much. Uh, so I could talk about you know sort of overall comic book tropes and stuff, but I couldn't really analyze a lot of what author and artist James O'Barr specifically does because he doesn't have a large body of work in my opinion. So I think that makes it um, tricky to sort of review it purely on that angle. That said, sometimes I'll just, you know, sort of review a comic. So. Um, that's not to say that I wouldn't ever cover the crow. Uh, I just don't have a good angle on it yet. Shirley says she would love the crow. Okay, well, hmm. uh, good to know. Okay, people are potentially interested in me talking about the crow. I will say, uh, I, I discovered that one back when it was originally published. That was probably the... Uh, it was probably the late 80s that that one came out. Um, I'm just going off the top of my head. I could be wrong about that, but uh, that was sort of when I started discovering a comic book store and uh, got into independent sort of black and white comics. So I remember I read that one before it became a movie. And then I was sort of a fan of Brandon Lee because I'd seen... Rapid Fire, his previous movie in the theater with a friend, and I really enjoyed it. I hadn't really discovered Hong Kong cinema or good kung fu, so to me, like, Rapid Fire was a, like, really exciting discovery. And uh, so I was really, really upset when uh, Brandon Lee uh, died on the set of The Crow. That, that really upset me in a big way. I remember I came into... Uh, my high school class that day wearing all black, which was not typical for me. I was 
all of a sudden dressed like some goth kid because I was sort of in mourning. And I remember a friend even asked me about it. She was like, why are you all in black? And I go, Brandon Lee died. <laughs> she, she always used to sort of tease me about that. <laughs> She's like, remember that day you came in and you were just like, Brandon Lee died. I was like, I was really upset at that moment. Uh, it was really big deal to me at the time. So, anyway... All that is to say that if I covered The Crow, it would actually be kind of emotional for me. Um, you know, I, I came to discover other action stars and stuff that I liked more than Brandon Lee, but I was very young when I discovered him, and, and uh, it was a big deal at that point in my life, so it remains emotionally kind of strong to think about The Crow. Um, I tried to re-watch it uh, this past year, and I, uh, I was having trouble. I couldn't really get into it. It was still very depressing to me. I was really having a hard time separating the fiction from the behind-the-scenes real-life tragedy. Um, I don't always have that problem. I can, I can frequently separate the art from the artist. But for some reason, this one I, uh, I couldn't. But we'll see. If people are curious about my take on things, I will, uh, I'm up for it. Have you considered doing comic reviews instead of just tropes, like Killing Joke or Gotham by Gaslight? Well, um, I have Nintendo. I sometimes I um, sometimes I worry that I've uh, boxed myself into a corner by calling my show comic tropes. Um, there's definitely a lot of comics that I like to analyze technique. You know that that's that's the sort of idea behind it is is looking at creators' technique. Um, but I worry that calling it tropes is, is a turnoff to some people. Uh, it's very hard to sort of reboot and rebrand yourself, um, on YouTube. You almost start from scratch. Uh, so instead what I do is I'm just slowly working in some different types of reviews now and then. Like, um, I did that Spider-Man one more day and I called it I Have Issues. Or sometimes I've done Chris Recommends. And even then, sometimes I'll just brand something comic tropes. But, you know, it's more just looking at a silly comic than really looking at the techniques. So, um, I don't consider any comic sort of uh, something that I couldn't review, potentially. It just sort of, how do I, how do I brand that when I publish it? That becomes the trick. Um, that said, I could easily do something like, uh, killing joke. Um, maybe I'm looking at artist Brian Boland's tropes, you know, and we're just happening to look at a really good comic or Gotham, Gotham by Gaslight. You know, maybe I'm taking another look at Mike Mignola's artwork or something. So, um, there's always an angle. It, it's just a matter of finding it. But I really do put some thought into that. I don't just sort of pick up a comic and go like, okay, here's here's my hot take on it. Um, I, I plan my, my material out a little bit more than that, um, especially uh, the more I've done this show. I used to not plan quite as much, but, but now I sort of have developed a, um, what would I call it, just like, a, a workflow and it requires um, planning. Uh, 
I'm uh, thinking I'll start doing a slightly new segment next year uh, where I do look at tropes but like in a broader sense here and there. For instance, um, you know, the trope of orphans becoming superheroes, the trope of teen kid gangs, and I'll take that back as far as I can into the past to see like, you know, where it came from and what it evolved from. So that's something I'm planning on doing in 2018, but those episodes will require a, a little bit more uh, research than simply picking an interesting issue by an artist or a writer and uh, delving into it. So yeah, um, I've still got plenty of new ideas for how to uh, how to do new stuff with comic tropes. There's a lot I still want to accomplish with it. True Fan Forum says, when you hit it out of the ballpark like Mr. Obar did with the crow, you can rest on that achievement. I suppose you could. I um, wonder. Uh, if he uh, got rich off of just one creation, I don't know. But it was creator-owned, so maybe. Shirley mentions that both Brandon and Bruce Lee were from Seattle. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been out to their grave uh, since I live out here and uh, sort of paid my respects, uh, you might say, because both of them really entertained me with what they did and got me thinking about stuff, so felt like I owed it to them to sort of stop by and just acknowledge their work. I don't know. I don't really believe in ghosts or anything, but I just sort of felt like it was the uh, right and respectful thing to do. I, I think it's sort of how we remember people. It's like I stop by the graves of my family members when I visit Massachusetts. And, uh, it's important to me. Have you, oh, I guess there's no more questions. Unless this... No. Uh, hmm. Okay, nobody's asking questions. Oh, wait. No, I miss Here's. I can't stand the guy that played Crow in City of Angels. I get it's a completely different guy than Eric Draven. It just seemed too Joker for me. Brandon Lee is the only Crow for me. Yeah, didn't they make like four of those movies? And a TV show? With Mark DaCosta, too much. Well, I'm pretty excited uh, about the holidays because uh, I get to go home and see a family in Massachusetts that I haven't seen in over a year. That'll be really nice. I'm pretty excited about that. It's coming up fast. Can't really afford to buy anybody anything this year, I don't think. Since I got laid off and I have to be careful with my money until my next job gets lined up.
So I'm thinking of doing like some sort of art or craft. We'll see. It's tricky. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Pride myself on being able to give people something that they'd actually benefit from and like, but just not an option this year. Ooh, losing people fast. Down to seven. <laughs> and I think two of them are family members. Well, sorry, folks. It's uh, kind of late, and uh, no, I can understand that. You know what? I'm going to actually work on this area. So it looks like I'm sort of falling back onto my uh, brush pen again. So maybe I should put that down now and go back to the uh, quill and actual brush, or brush pen, brush. It's easy to uh, sort of get lost in a whatever tool you have in front of you. Did you answer my question if you've read The Private Eye? Is that by um is that by Brian K. Vaughn on that service where you pay what you think it's worth? Is that what, what you're talking about with the private eye? I think it is, but if so I have not read that, at least not yet, because I did want to actually pay for it, and I sort of felt like I didn't have the disposable income handy anytime I'm remembering it. That That's the biggest problem. Is uh, There are times where I've probably been able to afford it, but I, but I haven't been thinking of it. Um, let me know if that's what you're talking about. You got the hardcover version. Oh, so that's something that's in comic book stores then? Because I didn't realize that. The guy from City of Angels was still better than the guys they got from the third and fourth movies. They were bad. That's from True Fan Forum. Agreed. I Well, you know what? I think I only saw up through three, and then I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> I sort of see the problem with the crow is that it's uh, sort of the same problem as something like Highlander. Um, it, it there's only so much story to tell. It, it 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 doesn't need to have a huge mythology with lots of versions of uh, the same character, etc. So. Yeah.
Dennis Hopper was in the fourth Crow movie? Oh, that's depressing. Dennis Hopper is a good actor that could just get so hammy, especially in his later film roles when they just decided, uh, this guy can only play villains. But, um, if you've seen him as Frank in Blue Velvet, you know that he could be absolutely terrifying. I don't, I don't know if there's a, a cinematic villain that creeps me out as much as Dennis Hopper did in Blue Velvet. That is one disturbing role. Thanks, Nintendo. Nintendo, uh, since you haven't been in in a while, uh, I found my Switch. I'd been looking for it forever. It was uh, simply on my work table right behind the computer where I make comic tropes every week. And somehow I was completely blind and didn't see it. So, uh, hopefully around uh, Christmas maybe I'll get a Super Mario. And with your name being Nintendo, I'm going to assume you like Nintendo. Did you get Super Mario Odyssey? Do you have any Amiibo? No, I haven't bought uh, any of that yet. I don't. I can't really afford it. Um, but maybe some someday down the road. Um, and I don't have any Amiibo now. Wait, did they come with the Wii U? Because I think I got a Super Mario one with the Wii U, but I don't know if that works with uh, what do you call it on? the switch remember after you use your brush to wash it not just with uh, water but with uh, soap the brushes are made out of hair just like your head you gotta treat it the same if you want them to last Quiet tonight. Hopefully, no one's going to watch this one when it's archived. I'm not talking about anything interesting. Oh, well. That's what i got to figure out is, uh, like, I guess I have to have a list of topics beside me and, like, talk about, like, you know, the British invasion of, of writers into comics in 1987. Something like that. So that if there aren't any questions in the 
chat room. Still got something to say that's interesting to the viewers. I'll have to think about that. And be prepared. Doing an excellent job, Chris, as usual. You're kind, Shirley. Look, I'll just... Hello, I'm Ray. Ooh. What a body. Oh, there she is. <laughs> uh, oh, look at how she's looking at me. We'll get eye contact. Hello, Ray. How are you? Not bad. You're doing a great job. Thank you. You know, I'm doing what I can, um, just trying to represent your staff uh, accurately. Thanks. My staff is really important to me. Yeah, well, my staff is important to me, too. And by that, I mean the Comic Trope staff. And by that, I mean all of my supporters on Patreon. Nice plug. Wow. Thanks, Ray. All right, so that's one of the crazier things I've uh, done on this live stream, right? You know what? I hmm, I don't think this is the right tool for that. I think I need to use my brush pen. Get your own man, Ray. Huh? What can I say? Those Star Wars girls love me. Just to be clear, Ray likes me, not Daisy Ridley. Just to be clear. Sorry that my hand uh, tends to block what I'm illustrating a lot of the time. I've uh, tried to think of different camera setups, and I don't have a great idea yet. Um, I've even watched a few other people that draw on YouTube, and uh, it seems like it's actually sort of a common problem figuring out the right angle. I'm hungry. I'm sure you all benefited from knowing that. Fortunately, there's food in the house. Okay. Yeah, I was flipping out a little, Shirley. Nintendo says, I have Amiibo but can't afford a Switch. With a name like Nintendo, some Nintendo fan. Oh, see, yeah, I, I, I actually assumed you had one. I assumed that. My goodness. I have a Switch. I only have one game for it. Uh, Zelda. It's beautiful. 
And uh, yeah, I'm excited to at some point pick up Mario Odyssey. It looks good. I hope I hope it is. I think I think I'll like it. That's what I think. I know a tricky question. Not everybody will have an answer for it, but what's your favorite one-hit wonder song? A song by like, you know, a group that only had like one big hit. Or at least they're really only known for that one song. There's a tricky question. Let me know if you can think of one. What kind of STD can transform people into animals? The alien kind? That would be scary. Mm. Oh, they're talking about some sort of a horror movie? Nintendo says, with my graphic art style, I go all out on a human rat monster. Grant Morrison did that in Animal Man. There's a uh, somewhat obscure DC Comics superhero called Bawana Beast, and his power is that he, well, he's got several powers, but he can merge any two animals into a new thing. And uh, in Animal Man, Grant Morrison wrote that he sort of went crazy and uh, he turned a homeless man and a rat into a rat creature once. It was quite disturbing. He just sort of messed stuff up by merging two random things all, all over the city. But wanna be Chrissy's answer is Unbelievable by EMF. That is a good one-hit wonder song. I like it. I'm trying to think of what mine would be. I know one that's good is a Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. That's a pretty catchy song that and they never had anything else as far as I know. What else is good? No Rain by Blind Melon would probably count. I mean, it's not their fault. Like, their, their lead singer died. But they were basically a one-hit wonder. Let's see, Chris should cosplay as Ray at San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> he even has her voice tone. Oh, yeah, I really nailed the voice, didn't I? <laughs> I 
Hi, I'm Ray. I like Star Wars. Who else is into War in the Stars? With me, Ray. It's me. Nobody else. Boy, oh, I melt with you by modern English. That's a good one. All right. Um, well, it didn't come out perfect. I tried a couple new things, so I consider that a success because I was trying to uh, experiment and practice with some different tools. Get this out of the way. Um, So that's the drawing. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, there's a few areas that, that look problematic at best. That's too bad. I tried. So um, I would say that uh, these details on the boots, these straps don't look great. Maybe I should just turn that all black, to be honest. This was supposed to be sort of a light shadow coming from her staff, not a dark one. Um, I don't think it's consistent with the rest of what I drew, which includes harsh shadows. And then when it comes to the face, um, you know, I was trying to throw, like, just kind of a hard shadow under her nose and under her right eye. I think it's too much. I think that like this should this this is too much. Uh, so you know, I guess I learned. Uh, it's unfortunate that I uh, screwed up like that because I do like the overall pose quite a bit. I, I, I I'm yeah I'm pretty happy with the pose, uh, and I'm even happy with like most of the details on things like the staff. I'm happy with the hands, but uh. Yeah, just uh, it got away from me when when I worked on shadow parts. So the eyes, the the shadow here, and the boots. Uh, I could try to just turn them into so all solid sort of black areas to be at least consistent with this, but I don't think it would really improve the drawing that much. And fortunately, you know, this isn't for anything other than I wanted to practice with my brush and quill. Um, and and I like what I came up with there. Um, that was that was interesting. Um, I, I do like some of the little bits of detail that I was able to accomplish with these. Um, I don't know if this necessarily looks better than when I use technical pens and brush pens, but that's that's me. That's not on the tool, you know. Like it's the poor artist that blames the tool. Um, so I'll I'll keep practicing with these. Hopefully uh, get a little better. Uh, go somewhere interesting with them. And uh, just try to watch for uh, where I throw down my values. Because um, I really feel like if I just hadn't done that, that face is a lot more attractive. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks, Chrissy. Appreciate that. Yeah, so uh, time to clean up my work area. Appreciate everybody uh, hanging out with me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just sort of an impromptu, felt like drawing. Um, learned some things. Happy with some areas, not as happy with others. That's pretty typical, I suppose, when you're doing something like this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying. I, I don't think I'm great at inking. 
That, that's why I'm sort of trying to work here. I, I'm much more comfortable just working with my pencil. Um, if I were to do a comic as an artist, I'd prefer to have a separate anchor right now. But that's very unlikely. You know, if I was doing anything, it would probably be pretty indie. So I'd probably have to do it myself. Uh, anyway, so those are my thoughts. I uh, appreciate everybody coming by. I, I appreciate the questions and just keeping me company in general. That, that's, uh, that's very nice of all of you. I think you guys are the best. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Till I see you next time, keep reading comics.